Greetings ladies and gentlemen, I am Socio Psycho, and today we take a look at Ghost Control Inc, a game created by Bumblebee, available on PC, Mac, and Linux. It is a turn-based strategy game with some money management in a base aspect wrapped up in it, where you play as a offshore beat of Ghostbusters where you collect and combat ghosts for fame and fortune. Now let us find out whether not only is it worth your money, but more importantly, your time. When we go into the options menu, it's pretty barren. You don't have much to choose from. Now, I did play the game perfectly fine at 1920 by 1080 as it's been running in 60 frames per second with no issues, no crashes, clipping, or tearing of any sort. The music in the game is pretty simplistic and it's nice that they have the sound sliders split up. It's a offbeat shore of Ghostbusters 80 theme style music without actually sounding all the way like it is Ghostbusters, but it has its own little flair to throw you into a position. The game looks very graphically basic and really doesn't offer anything that's amazing in that altitude. But when we go into the actual game here, now the game is broken up and while it does stay at 1920 by 1080, the way that they've decided to do the UI is interesting in a way, I guess. As you can see, your interface is a time and date as the time goes by. And in the bottom corner, you have a phone, which brings you up all the different aspects which you can circulate through. Newspaper, which is just pretty much small little details about what's going on in the world. Not anything really all that amazing. Just some minor writing to try to fill gaps. Team members who you have in your party. Objectives are pretty simple because once you do a mission, which is cleaning out ghosts from an area, you'll get paid depending on how much of the area is still intact and that you haven't damaged or the ghosts haven't damaged. Then that money goes into your account and you buy a higher upgrade of headquarters, followed by a continuation in increasing your weapons and the amount of people you have and your car. So the money aspect is very simplistic in the game, whether it be just getting money to fuel your car to drive around the city or to pay for medical bills, injuries sustained during combat. They have a beastry, which is very simplistic. It just goes over all the ghosts and everything else that you've come across. It's not anything really that in-depth in the understanding of what you're going to be facing. They all really have a simplistic nature in them as the game itself, but they do offer a little bit of lore, I guess you could call it, or description upon the different creatures. And as you can see, more will arise the further you get into the game. Your equipment guide pretty much just shows all the equipment you have, and the achievements is you know, pretty much simplistic on the aspect of achievements. The interface and the UI is very straightforward, and it's not difficult to understand, although it might be a sort of like it or don't like it attitude. Now, like I said, the whole point of money is to gain a new headquarters and increase your status in the world. When you do that, it will cost a certain amount of money, as you can see here, to upgrade and buy your headquarters that will also increase your weekly rent that you need to pay. Now, in the headquarters itself, you have some very basic things. You have the Ecto Vault, which stores ectoplasm that you get from a ghost, just like in a movie. The more that you have in your storage, the more you can do. You can upgrade your storage capacity to hold more, or you can wait until you have a certain amount and you can put it towards research, or you can put it towards nitro for your car. In a spare room, the research really comes in when you need a research lab. Now in bigger buildings, you're able to have more rooms, so you can have more workout rooms or research rooms, whatever your case is. And the research rooms are actually pretty simple. There's really not much depth to it, as you don't have that much availability in what you're able to craft. And craft is a loose word. I, I would say more enchant would be maybe a more common term in this regard because you can't just place anything into the slot and upgrade it. We'll give it a boost. We'll give it some sort of resistance. It would be nice if you could put in your bodysuit, ectoplasma research, and be like, hey, you are... 5% more resistant to enemy attacks. It really lacks a serious amount of depth in how much it allows you to be able to do in regards to actually making the game feel like yours. You are limited in just very few items being able to upgrade or research these upgrades, 
and the upgrades they do do have a small variation whether it's damaged or increase the type of damage it does how the, your weapon reacts when you shoot it it doesn't really add that level of depth or that that little zing that you would hope for now you can hire new members and as you grow larger and you go into different missions as the game progresses forward and your vehicle gets larger you can take more members out with you into battle because the bigger the jobs you do the larger the payload is. The thing that I kind of like and I don't like about that fact is that the payloads only increase as the game increases so you can't get a big job or you can't go against a job which is really difficult or hard if you're not in a larger headquarters. It starts you off small and it keeps all the jobs it gives to you really small. It doesn't allow you to kind of venture out for yourself. As so you can see, this is pretty much everything you have in the working station of your base. As your base grows larger, you might be able to add a few things to it, but it's very limited in what you're able to actually do. And when we talk about the map itself and how you interact with the world, when you drive around the town, it does take up your fuel. And they have a Nitro Master boost to kind of allow you to get around the town faster if you want to, which goes into the ectoplasm like I talked about. But in between spending, whether it be medical bills or buying gear from merchants, the gear that you're able to buy really doesn't feel like it has much weight in the game. And unfortunately, yet again, it suffers from a severe lack of depth from the game. Because while there is some small variations in what you're able to buy, it doesn't entice you with, hey, look what you can buy later on once you have more money, if that's even the case, or what you're able to buy doesn't upgrade as you increase to a larger headquarters. So you start off with a small headquarters and you pretty much see everything you're gonna be able to buy. So it doesn't really make you feel like you're progressing anywhere because as you increase in the difficulty of missions, you'll gain more money, but there's really no increase in the gear. So it's kind of an, an off slack there. And there's not much variation, unfortunately. As I said before, now it is a modern-esque world, so I don't expect to go into an area or a zone, fight a bunch of ghosts, and them to drop loot. I understand where the game's coming from, and that's why the integration of a merchant system into the game really needed to be highly prevalent, where in this case, it was not. And that was a large issue, unfortunately. And when we come to the missions themselves, the missions do happen sporadically. As you either are in your base or you're driving around town, you'll get a phone call and you have a choice in between selecting the call or not selecting the call. I don't know why you wouldn't take the job, as even if you decide not to do it, it has no negative repercussions to you. As you can see, there are other ghost teams moving around the town. So even if you accept the job, but you don't get there in time, you don't have any reputation or infamy tied to your character or your business. So not being able to accomplish a job or taking too long with a job doesn't negatively affect you in any way. This also ties into the unfortunate fact that it forces you into combat when it wants to instead of allowing you to do it when you want to. Now I understand they balance this sort of out so the whole town isn't filled with ghosts by having different ghost teams controlled by the AI which if you don't end up going to there fast enough to your job they will steal it from you. I can see how that can sort of be helpful perhaps but at the same time they're nerfing themselves because they're not allowing a variation in a difficulty or allowing the player to choose when they want to. And what happens a few times, which is slightly annoying, you'll get a job and it's all the way across the other side of town. And so even with Nitro, or with Nitro it's rarer, you can rush to that location as fast as possible, but one of these other ghost teams that the AI controls may be in that vicinity and decide, hey, I'm gonna do this job, and so they steal it from you. So it doesn't allow you to actually play the game as you want to, and it really hurts you to not choose in between, okay, well, this ghost mission is, you know, a level four, where this ghost mission is a level nine. What do you, what do you want to go after? They don't allow you or give you that choice to see the town is slowly starting to take over and you have to combat against it. So it really has a disconnect of like, well, why does it even matter what I'm doing? Because all these other little ghost teams are going to do it themselves. It, it doesn't matter. And that's a real detriment to the game. And it's, it's frustrating when they do steal your job. 
But when we go into the combat, now the combat UI is very simplistic. As you can see here, this is the basic screen and it is a turn-based style, which is perfectly fine. You have a number category at the top, one is movement, two is place trap, three is pick up a trap. The annoying thing about traps is that to place them, you have to place them one square, one tile over from where you are. This means that you can't throw a trap onto a tile or onto an enemy or anything like that. It is really limited in the capability of how you are able to interact with your world. Four is for inside buildings and houses. You can open a door and turn on lights. Your six, which would be space, is put yourself in a guard mode. The seventh one is enter, which is end your turn. The eighth is using a special ability. And nine would be just fleeing from the area. Now you can see that there's a damage meter on the side. And the damage meter is your sort of timetable upon where you have to try to defeat the enemy before they destroy all of the zone. I haven't found an issue with that at all because it's while the enemy does destroy property, they don't do it in a manner of where they seek out every single turn something to destroy. They're very passive in what they destroy and sometimes they don't even destroy anything. So when something does get destroyed, there is a good chance that it will just come from your weapon accidentally missing and you hit a table or a tree or a door or whatever, you destroy some of the property, so you end up doing damage as well. At the end of the game, as you can see, there is the job done screen. It basically goes over how many ghosts removed, the salary, the damage caused, and the cash earned. Obviously, damage caused will be subtracted from what you earn, as well as the stats. Your sanity is the same as your health bar. When that goes to zero, you'll die, but you can replenish that by going to the hospital and getting healed up. The, the stat systems in the game is actually very simplistic and they do contribute to how the combat moves, but the combat is very basic as well. So you never really feel like, well, if I have more of this, I'm going to just be uber powerful because the game doesn't really feel powerful and it feels a little bit more like a management game rather than a turn-based strategy game. Because there's such a lack in the depth of the combat, or the, more importantly, the abilities you're able to have, there really doesn't seem much of a point in actually being able to combat against the guy, uh, creatures, which ends up with it just sort of being repetitive. And then when you tie it into the fact of, well, what about the money management and the base building, and it doesn't allow you to explore or express the world in your fashion or in your time. And it doesn't matter how much variation of the creatures there are, as the combat does get repetitive because of its small limitations. This game is a good idea and it has a strong base, but unfortunately for the amount of content it has in it and the asking price of $15, I cannot recommend it. Now should you like a casual game, which this one definitely plays like, and it's on sale for about $5 to $7 then yes, I could recommend it in that scenario alone, but for a full retail price or to say, wait, hey, if you haven't played this or it doesn't look too interesting, you'll be surprised because that's not true. It's very upfront about what you get, and as I've described to you right now, it's missing a lot of things that really could just give it that nuance of truly excellent. So if you really love Ghostbusters and you really love a casual turn-based game, if it's on sale, then I can see where you might want to get it. But if you've never heard of this before or you may be intrigued by it but not enthralled by it, then I would probably just say don't bother. Thank you everybody for watching and listening. I've been Socio Psycho. And as always, I thank you for your viewership and constant support. Make sure to give your feedback in the comments below and I'll see you next time.